G'day you big bunch of legends, welcome back to the channel and thanks very much for tuning in. Now today, I am not in the boat, in fact, I'm in the kitchen. And I'm going to be showing you two of my favourite ways to have freshly caught tuna. Now if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'd know that recently I went out off the Gold Coast with Sean O'Whale and we got connected to some really big yellowfin tuna. We kept two for a feed, which means we had plenty, and I mean plenty, of fresh tuna to get through. So these are two of my favorite ways to have it. Now, you don't just have to do this with yellowfin tuna. I'm sure you can do it with just about any tuna. I know for a fact it works great on long tails. Uh, it'd work on albacore striped tuna. Um, if anyone's game enough to try it, I welcome you to try it on a mac tuna. Don't know how it's gonna go. Probably tastes pretty rough, but Hey, if you do try it, let me know because I'd love to know if it works because I'll tell you what, they're pretty rough on the old tooth. Southern bluefin tuna would be another cracker. Any tuna type, probably any fish actually, I don't know. I've only tried it with tuna, but it works an absolute treat. So without further ado, we're going to start with sashimi. We're going to end with seared tuna. Chuck your chef's hat on guys because we are going cooking, crack a beer, get comfortable or get in the kitchen and, uh, and join me. We're going to have some fun. Let's get to it. Yes! 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 You are right? Yes! <coughs> watch, watch your leg, watch your leg! That's a bigger fish than I thought. Oh, you might get a shot here, you might get a shot. Get a shot. Take him. In, in, in. Yeah, in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of pigeon pears, mate! <laughs> Yes! Sugar! <laughs> oh, yes! Seen yellow! Look at that! Oh, fuck. Oh. I have a guess, mate. Mine's about 300 grams heavier. Yeah, bro! How <laughs> yeah, good's that? me! Oh, my God! Oh, far out. Look at that. You wouldn't be happy if you just got that for the day. <laughs> You'd be absolutely stoked. Have a go at it. Look beautiful. at that. Absolutely beautiful. Yellow fin tuna meat Trim these in up. the shops is ridiculously expensive and we've got plenty of it. Yes. Plenty of it. And I'm, it's, a, it's a team effort. I'm trying to knock slabs off this one. This is the first fish here. And um, Sean I's trimming them up and put them in bags. Okie dokie, let's get started. Now, probably the hardest part of these two recipes is probably catching the tuna in the first place. Let's face it, they're hard to catch at the best of times. Um, so once you've got that out of the way, one thing I can't stress enough is looking after your tuna, mate. If you look after it correctly, it will really shine on the plate. So it's one thing I always recommend doing is really take the time to look after it. Now for mine, I like to keep mine in the fridge after, after it's been filleted obviously, keep it in the fridge in a Tupperware container. Now before I put it in the fridge, make sure I pat down the fillets with a paper towel, get any excess moisture off, and then I rest it in the Tupperware container on a piece of paper towel. Now that might need changing the first couple of days, um, you know, once or twice a day to get rid of all that extra moisture. But doing that will keep that fillet fresh and it won't start smelling, it'll last for a lot longer. Trust me on that one, it's a really good tip to follow. So this is what I'm working with today. Have a go at that for a big old slab of tuna. What an absolute beastly piece. Now. If you were going to slab that into steaks, it's probably too big to eat. So what I'm going to do is dress this fillet up um, so I can have a sashimi section and then some steak section for the searing. Rightio. Now, oh, I've got to wash my hands first. Righto, guys, before I cut this tuna up, I did just want to say that I'm by no means a chef or a sashimi master or anything of that nature. I just like eating fish, so I cut it up the way I see would best suit my needs. Uh, if I offend you, by the way, I cut this up, I'm deeply sorry, but hey, you should try my way because I reckon it works pretty good. What I do have though is this dope sashimi sword. This is a 10 inch Aishan knife. It is custom made for sashimi. It is super, super sharp. It's got a bevel on one edge so you can cut nice and straight. I recommend getting one. They at least make you look like you know what you're doing. I don't, but I can cut my tuna really damn cool with this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kind of sort of fill it this chunk. So I'm going to take the bottom. It's about... Actually, you should be able to see on this little camera here, you can see this line there. 
If you have that in the stake, it kind of breaks up your stake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my knife there and I'm gonna run the knife along parallel to the ground at that level there. And it should come out down the back here and I'll have the top section which I'll sear and the bottom section which will be my, which will be my sashimi slab. So knife in, these sashimi swords, they're nice and long and they are super sharp. Oh, look at that, glide through. Oh, my cutting board's moving. Oh yeah. So I've got my slab there. That's gonna be for steaks. And I'm gonna put that back in my Tupperware container. I'm gonna put that back in the fridge while we're doing the sashimi. Now what I'm left with is this beautiful slab of tuna here. That's the thickness, it's about maybe a touch over an inch thick. And from there, I can just do little slices like this. Hang on, I'll try and keep this camera straight for you. Little slices like that. Look at that. And that is prime sashimi. It's about two mil thick, and all you need is about 10 or so of them, and you're ready for sashimi. But that nice block there, you put that back in the fridge and just attack it for the next few days. But yeah, just cut little slabs off and you're ready to rock and roll. Now they reckon the sashimi saws are so long because you can cut the tuna in one stroke. You're not sawing at it. You definitely can. Um, and being super sharp also helps. But I think that really helps keep the flesh intact and you don't tear it, doesn't come to pieces, doesn't pull it apart. So um, yeah, well, actually I really enjoy using this thing. It's, it looks cool, but it really does work. All right, that's enough sashimi for me. I'm flying solo today, so I only need a little bit because I'm gonna have some seared tuna for lunch after. But let's get started on our sauce. Right, -o, so the rest of that tuna is back in the fridge. You want to keep it really cold at all times. You don't want to let it heat up, then cool down, heat up, then cool down. It's bad for it, it won't last as long. Um, as soon as you're done with it back in the fridge, keep it cool at all times. Now let's work on our sauce. Well, I don't even know if this is actually a sauce or not. It's like a dipping sauce. Um, yeah, I don't know the correct term for it. But grab yourself a lemon, lop it in half, squeeze it into a little bowl. Now remember these are all these are all roundabout measurements, they're not exact. You kind of do it to taste. It doesn't have to be spot on because there is no exact recipe. That's how much juice I've got in there. You could probably do with a little bit more. Nah, bugger it. That'll do. I've only got a couple little pieces here. Oh, I'm missing me wasabi. Hold tight. Back on deck. Now you want to put a little slug of wasabi in there. So I don't mind a bit of spice. So that guy there, that's gonna give a bit of a kick, but it's not gonna blow your socks off. Now you wanna get a little spoon, and you wanna mix that with your lemon juice until it kind of all dissolves and mixes together. Right, like so. Now you wanna get, you wanna get some soy sauce and pour it in there. Now, last time I did a sashimi video, I got a heap of heckle about the brand of soy sauce I was using. I'm not a soy sauce connoisseur. I don't know anything about soy sauce apart from you can get it at Coles and it goes really good with sashimi. So if you do know a really good soy sauce or I'm doing something wrong, make sure you let us know. So far I'm using Pearl River Bridge. It says soy sauce on it, so I assume it's the right stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you guys know anything better or know something I don't, feel free to let me know in the comments because uh, yeah, who would have thought soy sauce isn't soy sauce? But chuck a bit in, probably about double the mixture you got there. You'll see it goes to a, uh, from a black to a brown liquid. Now let's give it a stir. Mix it all together. Taste test. You'll know when you get it right. It's like a cross between a bit of sweetness and sourness from the lemon, saltiness from the soy, and there's a bit of kick there from the wasabi. Now, that's all there is to it, that's it. That's literally it. There's two ways you can, um, you can have your sashimi. You can just straight up dip it, might just halve these pieces, they're a bit bit wide. I'll just halve them real quick. So you can dip it. Oh. Where you just, bit of these ones into the gob. That's pretty special. Or, because there's lemon juice in there, you can actually leave it in there for about a minute and the lemon juice reacts with the fish and kind of semi-cures it or cooks it. Um, and that's another great way to do it. Same deal. Once you've left it in there for a little bit, get a fork, into the gob, and I'll tell you what, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. It's damn good either way. 
you haven't tried sashimi and you're scared because it's raw fish, I'll tell you what, you're gonna have to suck it up and give it a go because it is just too good to miss. It is really, really good. And you can use this recipe on just about any other fish um, from wahoo, mackerel, anything pelagic, kingfish. It's all damn good. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get stuck into the rest of this tuna and then we're gonna get cracking on the seared tuna recipe. And I'll tell you what, it is an absolute belter as well. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, I've got some eating to do first. Hold tight. Mm. All right, let's see some tuna. Now, you're probably looking at this bunch of ingredients and going, what the? Sam's cheese has slid well and truly off his cracker, but you're gonna have to trust me on this one, guys. It comes together an absolute treat. So stick with me, stick with me. We're gonna get there and it's gonna be tasty, I promise you that. Uh, first thing you wanna do is you wanna get your maple syrup and you want three tablespoons of that in a bowl. Now, one and a half tablespoons of your Dijon mustard. Oh, making a mess already. That can be a half. Now, one tablespoon of lemon juice. Two teaspoons of olive oil. And then the magic ingredient, some cayenne pepper. Now, don't go overboard with this stuff because this will blow your socks off. It is, um, it's pretty crazy. So I just sprinkle a bit in, I'll taste it and sprinkle a bit more if I think it needs it. But trust me, you go overboard, you're gonna be burning. Sprinkle a bit in. I reckon that'll do it. Grab yourself a fork and whisk it all together. Trust me guys, this isn't as gross as it looks. It doesn't, it doesn't look the best. But trust me, it is a cracker recipe. All right, give it a taste. That's good. That's really good. I don't even really know how to describe the flavors in there. You got that sweetness from the maple syrup. You got a bit of, you got a bit of pepperiness from the Dijon mustard, bit of kick from the cayenne, and um, bit, of, bit of sweetness and bit of sourness from the, um, the lemon as well. Trust me, it is really good. I really do urge you guys to give it a crack. But what you want to do is you want to spoon out a little bit. I oh, will just use this. Spoon out a little bit to save for the end so you can drizzle it over your tuna once it's cooked. So about a tablespoon or a bit more, um, just so you've got some at the end that you can use. All right. Now you can just leave that out or chuck it in the fridge, I don't know. Yeah, chuck it in the fridge is probably the best. Okay, now I'm gonna clean up a little bit here and then I'm gonna get our fish out. And we're actually gonna marinate it in this sauce for about 10 to 15 minutes per side. You're gonna to have to flip it over because it's not deep enough to fully submerge. But clean up here first and then we'll get stuck into the fish. Rightio, we're back on deck now. You wanna transfer your, your sauce into a flat bottom container so then you can place your fish in there. Now with the fish, you want steaks about an inch thick. So again, sashimi sword. <clears throat> One, probably just do three, it's only me. Two. Three. I'll save that other piece for later. Now grab your tuna and put it one side down in the mixture. All right. Well, looks like I'm only having two. I should have used a bigger container. Hmm. That's all right, that's all right. Two will do, two will do. I'll save these for dinner. Righto guys, now you wanna leave them in the mixture for about 10 to 20 minutes, side down, and then flip them over and do the same on the other side. Obviously in the fridge, but uh, we'll come back to you in about 30 minutes. Right, got about five minutes left in the marination station, and while that's finishing off, I'm gonna preheat my pan so it's ready to rock and roll and make sure it's super, super hot. So fire it up. Stroth. By the time your uh, tuna's ready to take out the marinade or the sauce, whatever you call it, it's ready to go straight in the pan. Hot tip for you. Probably turn this thing on. Don't wanna burn the house down. Mm. Righto, chefs, we are back in action, and we're gonna kick it off with a bit of olive oil in the pan. Now that pan is damn hot, like proper hot. Got the exhaust fan on. Uh, hot tip for young players, get yourselves one of these or a lid for your fry pan because for some reason this recipe spits like there is nothing else. And um, yeah, you'll end up coating your whole bench and your shirt and it's not pretty. 
Make sure that oil is everywhere. Now on the side you're going to put down first, need a bit of S&P, give a crack of salt, crack of pepper. Now we're going to do the other side when it's in the pan. Alright, let's get these in, get ready to, uh, to shield yourself with this. Drip it. Whoa! <laughs> let's get this second bit in there. All right. Now, you can get rid of this. This is, uh, it's done its job. Keep your S&P out. So we're gonna need that to give it a quick squirt on the other side. Now you wanna have it on there for about 90 seconds each side. Remember, we are searing our tuna. We are not cooking it all the way through. If someone tells you to cook their piece all the way through, ask them politely to get out of your house and learn to appreciate their seafood. But 90 seconds each side, that's a rough guesstimate. For about an inch thick, that's about right. But you want that pink strip in the middle, so you gotta, you got to stay on it, you got to be quick. Um, you don't want to overcook it, trust me. Righto, let's put a bit of S&P on the other side. Beautiful. Now that is 90 seconds. Oh, look at that. I've made a mess again. Oh, easy does it. Right, we're on the uh, home stretch. Get your plate ready. Get a clean bench. How are we looking? That is done. 90 seconds is up. One. Two. Have a go at that. Are you not impressed? Not only can I uh, wave a fishing rod around, it appears like I can cook a bit of fish as well. Now, I'll cut this one in half so you can see what I'm talking about. Just kill this. Actually, I'll get our sauce. Don't forget about the sauce you got in the fridge. You're going to drizzle that over the top. Right, at the moment of truth, let's cut it open. Ooh. Ooh. Have a go at that. Cooked to perfection. Now, obviously, you'd serve this with salad or something else, crap like that. Doesn't matter because the tuna is going to be the star of the plate anyway. Now, your sauce, you want to just drizzle that over the top. You want plenty there so you can keep mopping it up with the tuna as you go through. But ladies and gentlemen, that is one of my favorite ways to have freshly caught tuna that you're gonna see. Trust me, give it a try. If you're looking to score some brownie points with your significant other, this will definitely get you across the line, if you know what I mean. I'm not gonna put anything else with this because I don't have any other salad, but yeah, salad, Whatever else, chuck it with it, and you've got yourself a meal fit for a king. Guys, if you've liked or learnt something today, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. Uh, I'll be back in the boat next week with another cracking adventure, so make sure you stay tuned. I need a knife and fork. Ah, oh, bugger it, I don't need a knife and fork. I'm going in with the old-fashioned hands for the taste test, and to close it out, give it a try, guys. Trust me, it's absolutely unreal. Have a good one. Catch you next time. Beautiful. Mmm.